Now I'd like to introduce you to Rahana Azam. She's the National Officer for Public <coughs> Services, GMB Union. Welcome, Rahana. First of all, can I say well done to the Brighton and Hove Women Against Cuts for organising this fantastic gathering. And I thank you for inviting me to share my union, the GMB's, experience on the government cuts. My name is Rahan Razam and I'm the GMB Trade Union's National Officer responsible for the NHS Public Services. I'm very proud of my union's record in participating and supporting communities to challenge injustices and inequality in society. Where there is injustice and inequalities, it is down to all of us to collectively challenge this. Solidarity and respect to all you great people who are working tirelessly in your communities to bring attention to what this government and local councils are doing. You know, whenever people ask me, what do I do? I proudly say I'm a trade union official. Sometimes I get this vague expression back. And I always say, you know, it's the best job in the world. Yes, it can be challenging. Organising workplaces, communities, and helping build a fair and equitable society is never going to be easy. But in this current climate, it has never been so important to organise and challenge. Unemployment is rising, two and a half million. The number of job vacancies has dropped by 200,000. Benefits for the most vulnerable have been decimated. Public sector pay has been frozen for years. We now face attacks on employment rights and our most prized national possession, the National Health Service, is being sold off. Claiming that we must face this austerity together, this government has cut the top rate of tax for the rich, invited their personal friends in business to a free-for-all on public sector finances, to profit directly from cuts in welfare payments, to profit directly from tearing up the NHS, and have turned community against community, class against class, against in the name of their big society. The result is that money has flown from the public purse and increase in debt. This government has taken money off the most vulnerable in society and put the same money firmly in the wallets of the rich. Shame on you, Clegg, Cameron and Cameron The GMB represents thousands of public sector workers and I invite you to join us if you're not a union member. And I'm going to say that because I'm here today. Dedicated public servants who have borne the brunt of the government's ideological attacks Public sectors, workers, including the NHS workers, have been hit by their wages frozen for three years and their pensions, the savings they expected in retirement, greatly undermined. And with each service that is cut, we see more of our members pushed into private providers or made redundant and more and more cuts to community services. 70 fire stations are earmarked for closure nationwide. Over 300 Police stations and front desks will have been closed by 2015 without replacement facilities. Ambulance services across the country are being slashed due to massive cuts to their budgets or services outsourced to the public, uh, private sector. Brave and committed public sector workers see more and more vital services that protect the safety of the public left to those who can pay for them. Now, I would like to share some of my experiences in my role as a GMB National Officer for the National Health Service. The NHS is a unique organisation, treasured by UK citizens and envied by the world over. My appointment to the post coincided with the passage of the Health and Social Care Bill through Parliament. The bill claimed it was liberating the NHS and was opposed by my union and many others from the start. We recognised that there wasn't going to be any liberation of the NHS, but the obliteration, which is, which is and will lead to dire consequences. There has never been a mandate for the dismantling of the NHS. It was never in either of the coalition party manifestos, with no indication of any of these plans. Cameron claimed the Conservatives are the party of the NHS then his party immediately cut the funds he promised to the NHS and sold its most profitable services to Conservative Party donors. 
NHS trusts were told to find £20 billion of efficiency savings and were never given the fair funding settlement they were promised. And why can't you trust them with the NHS? Because the Tories want everybody to pay for health services through private provision and health insurance fees. And why would they want to do that? Because they can afford private health care and screw everybody else who has to rely on the NHS for theirs. We have to bear in mind that apart from those who depend on the NHS, the NHS workforce is made up of diverse roles such as nurses, ambulance staff, health assistants, midwives, carers, auxiliary staff. Over half of the NHS workforce are women. Nearly 5,000 nursing jobs have been lost since the general election. Ambulance trusts are closing stations with all the dangers that causes for response times in the future. More and more treatments and services are being rationed. a &E departments are being closed despite Cameron's lies about frontline front services not to be cut. We just have to look 50 miles down the road. South London Healthcare Trust, a lot's been talked about that this week. It's gone bust caused by mismanagement and bad BFI, PFI contracts. The Trust Administrator, Matthew Kershaw, recommended the closure of accident and emergency departments, cutting a consultant-led maternity unit, cuts to jobs, privatisation of services, and the sell-off of NHS assets and premises. And all of this is permitted by the new Health and Social Care Act. And this tragedy is coming closer to home than you might think because Matthew Kershaw has been appointed as the Chief Executive of Brighton and Sussex NHS Trust. This is not an isolated case. Up to 60 other trusts are on the brink of bankruptcy. We all need health care. Demand is at an all-time high and is set to grow. So why has the Health and Social Care Act allowed NHS Trust to go bankrupt? without state intervention. Because if the NHS can't provide our health care, then we will be forced to go private. This is except for those who can afford insurance. Those in the greatest need will have to accept a substandard service. In a survey by the Royal College of Nursing, nearly half of the nurses said that they would leave their current job if they could. At a time when the number of nurses being trained is being cut, the service can't ill afford to lose this valuable expertise. And all of this plays into the hands of this government driving people away from the NHS. But this will not end the NHS. Nye Bevin, the great founder of the NHS, he said, the NHS will last as long as there are folk left with the will to fight for it. We care. We will fight, and this is why events like today is so important. The challenge is now on our shoulders to bring attention to the effects on communities as a result of the cuts. We need an NHS for future generations, not an Americanised system that will only be accessible on people's ability to pay rather than upon need. We have seen the coverage and support for the Save the NHS in Lewisham protests in March, the fantastic community organisation in North London to challenge the NHS trust cuts. Not a week goes by and you don't hear of communities organising against cuts. Grandmothers, mothers, daughters, sisters, it's our communities, our services and it's our calling to stand and be counted. We need more and more marches and events. We need more and more of these gatherings so we can collectively pool our resources, organise and challenge. Sisters of Brighton and brothers, I notice, I am privileged to be here with you today. It's our fight and we can and we will make our voices heard. The GMB Union is proud to play its part. And just to conclude, if I may, I would like to share a little story. A few years ago, I was privileged to participate in the first women's conference in Sierra Leone. With all that country's unimaginable injustices, that conference had a lasting effect on me throughout my activism. I recall the conference, a gathering of women similar to today under different circumstances, but the aim the same, building a fair and equal society. And you know what, I recall during the few days of the conference, women would stand up randomly and one would shout, woman, and another would shout, power. And this has always had a lasting effect on me. 
The words woman power echoed throughout the conference over the days and I found this incredibly empowering. It is only through collective solidarity that we will make a difference. So if I say woman, you're going to say? Power. Right. Thank you.